Okay, hi everybody, how are you all today? <laughs> Good, we're uh, always very happy to be here. Um, just to kind of introduce ourselves, my name is Sabra. And my name is Niku. And, and we're both, again, undergraduate students. We're both in our last year trying to finish up, hopefully. We'll see how that goes. Yeah. Um, but um, today we're gonna be presenting novel agents uh, targeting diffuse astrocytoma, and then I guess whenever the timer starts, we can go ahead. <laughs> awesome. Okay. It's starting already. Okay. Um, so as Sabra said, we're going to be discussing novel agents targeting diffuse astrocytoma. So a little bit more about our case. Um, we have the symptoms that Connie presented with, generalized seizure and left side uh, weakness, and then upon testing, she finds out that she has diffuse astrocytoma. So a little bit more about this um, condition. We have a slow-growing tumor that comprises about 15% of astrocytic uh, tumors. It's classified by World Health Organization as grade two. And we have a medium survival rate of six to eight years. It has no defined borders, and it's usually in the cerebral hemisphere of young adults. Uh, the no definition of the borders makes it kind of hard for the surgical resection step. So that's a complication that we usually have. So if you want to divide the patient treatment, treatments based on a genetic uh, marker, we can point to a gene called IDH1 or isodehydrogenase 1. And this gene actually codes for an enzyme in the metabolic pathway called citric acid cycle, which we'll see later on. And so patients could have either IDH1 mutant or IDH1 wild type. We see that IDH1 mutant patients usually have better prognosis, so progression-free uh, survival. And this kind of gives us the opportunity to try and um, develop therapeutics for them and actually see them come to fruition. Um, an interesting point is that this mutation is actually seen in higher grade gliomas as well, in glioblastomas. So that shows that this type of tumor has the potential to potentially be malignant um, transformancy. Sorry, so IDH1 mutant is, as I said, codes for an enzyme, and it's in the citric acid cycle. This uh, enzyme, if gone awry, leads to an oncometabolite, which is a um, a metabolite in the body which leads to some epigenetic changes that ultimately lead to tumor formation. So that's what we're dealing with. And the graph on the right uh, shows you how the red line is the people with the mutant uh, IDH1 gene and have better survival than the people in green, which are the wild type under radiotherapy and chemotherapy. So what we want to um, kind of talk about is that IDH1 mutant uh, status has the potential to be malignant, malignantly transformative, and it also has stem cell-like properties such as self-renewal and proliferation, so we kind of want that um, to be taken into account. So our first hypothesis is to develop a small molecule, a novel therapeutic, to kind of target IDH1 and elucidate um, signaling pathways associated with that to prevent um, kind of progression into higher grade gliomas. Um, so even more so, um, in addition, so transforming from lower grades of glioma to higher grades of glioma has uh, also been uh, like associated with a treatment in, in particular uh, with a chemotherapeutic temozolomide. Uh, and so what we've uh, also hoped to do, and this is sort of through the acquisition uh, of a higher, more proliferative um, oncometabolic um, state, um, and so what we hypothesize is that uh, certain clones, so particular groups of cells uh, in the lower, uh, in diffuse astrocytoma are able to live through therapy, uh, acquire mutations, and then continue on to higher grades of glioma and more aggressive states. Uh, and so our second hypothesis that we also hope to tackle um, is to also use um, We'll talk a little bit about the methodology later, uh, but we hope to induce malignant transformation with treatment using temozolomide and elucidate emerging clones or particular populations of cells and their genetic drivers that uh, allow for that progression to higher grades. Um, so we have three project aims. Um, so what we hope to do is to assess it in vitro, so in the nice dish, um, with our mouse models, and also perform um, a nice novel technique called CRISPR barcode. Um, so our first aim uh, here, we have a list of in vitro assays, and this will ensure that we're using IDH1 inhibitors, and they are working to diminish protein levels. Um, in our laboratory, we work in collaboration with the local hospitals, and we actually work with patient lines. Um, so we process these lines, and we can uh, use them for testing and to ensure that it, um, our inhibitors are actually working. Um, we also want to run a proliferation assay, and so what this means is that we want to ensure uh, that our IDH1 mutant inhibitors are controlling cell growth. 
Um, and we also want to make sure that our IDH1 mutant inhibitor is only tackling uh, or only killing cells that are cancerous, um, not our normal uh, cells. And so we can do a mixing experiment and also confirm this by checking protein levels as well as mRNA expression. Um, and we also want to test, so again, um, sphere formation or the self-renewal capacities associated with higher states of aggressiveness. So we want to make sure that that self-renewal capacity is going down. And we also want to make sure that cells are apoptotic or they're going through cell death through cell cycle analysis. Uh, and then our second aim, we also hope to test this in uh, mice models uh, and ensure that tumor burden is going down as well as survival is being increased at multiple time points. Uh, and our last aim um, is to use a, a novel system known as CRISPR barcode. So by, again, inducing that treatment that we mentioned earlier, um, what we want to do is elucidate emerging clones. So find that clone that's responsible for moving to malignant transformation, um, identify targets on those particular clones, and then combine them with our IDH1 mutant inhibitor and test those out for co-targeting. Um, so last but not least, we think a combinatorial approach, that's the buzzer, oh my god. Um, so our uh, combinatorial approach um, is it's really loud. Um, but uh, anyway, so we want to hopefully use a combinatorial approach, uh, and this will help us out, and we can elucidate those pathways. Uh, and we also want to work with the Brain Tumor Foundation of Canada for support groups because it doesn't just stop uh, at the science. So thank you to the Brain Tumor Foundation of Canada and our lab. <laughs> Hi guys. Hi. <laughs> Great work. Um, so I'm going to ask the kind of geeky metabolism question. And obviously, you sort of threw yourself under the bus on this one, oh, right? Oh, 100%. <laughs> so one, one of the things around isodehydrogenase and the, and the pathway around it is yeah. it's a very common one. So this is always the problem with doing the inhibitors. When you look at it and you look at what's already been done, is there, is there hints that you, you've seen in the literature about where to go next? Like when we talk about novel, right? It's not just recycling. So mm -hmm. I wanted to give you a chance to kind of bring that up. Sorry, can you repeat the question? So there's a fair amount already known about what inhibits that enzyme and the up, upstream and downstream from an allosteris mm -hmm. perspective. So sorry, I'm the biochemist. Yeah. Um, how can you use that to, to kind of speed up timelines, right? Because that's always the question when you talk about novel treatments. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the, the timeline in terms of the therapeutic landscape getting or therapy. getting, getting to, to therapy. therapy. Okay. So I think uh, moving forward, so we went through a little bit of analysis about the clinical trial landscape. Uh, and so currently from the analysis that I saw, I wasn't able to find much on IDH mutant inhibitors moving into an actual uh, clinical trial. So um, even though, you know, it's been elucidated or revealed that IDH1 mutant inhibitors, at least in research, have shown efficacy against um, treating uh, lower grades of glioma. I think the, the next phase would most definitely mo be moving into a clinical trial and to assess that eff uh, efficacy in patients. So to maybe start off with like a dose uh, clinical trial, ensure that um, that's treating patients safely, and then moving on to assess how IDH1 mutant inhibitors would be working um, to reduce tumor burden and survival rate for patients with IDH mutant uh, lower grades of glioma. Uh, but even more so, I think it kind of highlights our, second, or our third aim in particular. So even though IDH1 mutant inhibitors aren't necessarily novel, I think what's novel about the approach that we've taken is we want to use it, com it combinatorially with uh, other inhibitors uh, as soon as we elucidate other pathways through our research project. So, uh, and a combinatorial approach hasn't really been used before uh, because monomodal approaches, at least in uh, other uh, grades of glioma, haven't been as successful, so. Why do you think patients that have a glioma IDH wild type have a poorer prognosis than patients who have a glioma mm -hmm. that's IDH mutated? To me, an IDH mutation would confer survival advantage. What are your thoughts on that? Um, so how the IDH1 mutation works is that it produces, as I said, an oncometabolite, going back to your point, and that results in um, hypermethylation of 
the genome. So that kind of closes the chromatin and lets the, doesn't let the, I know this is um, kind of getting technical, but doesn't let the transcription factors to kind of go ahead and um, provide, transcribe those genes. So I believe the lack of this transcription kind of leads to the lack of malignancy for those patients and kind of allows them to be progression free. Um, that's my hypothesis, I believe. And it's shown in literature that um, as we presented with the graphs and everything that those have better prognosis. Um, yeah. And even with therapy, like yeah. in addition. So. Thank you to team one.